Okay, guys, I actually hadn't planned on doing another video today, um, but my little nephew lay down for a nap, so, and there's something I saw happen this morning, and it's been building, but it's now, it's sprung into life, and it needs to be addressed. I don't know, I, have, I, know I don't have a lot of people on here, but if I, I figure if I can get this to you guys, you guys can spread it out. Um, I was just talking to uh, a couple of the other grace preachers, uh, Susan, Diana, uh, David Benjamin. There, a trap has been sprung, and it's a trap that was set by Satan. Um, not everybody it hadn't sprung all the way until literally just recently, um, in my opinion. But because a lot of people were falling away from grace and going into lordship and, and other things. Um, but we've gotten into a situation, and Satan caused all this, into a situation where now we're looking for very specific things that we disagree on and other, our brothers and sisters and coming against them. Look, the only thing in the Bible we have to agree on is grace through faith. It is a free gift of God. Everything else, we can have minor adjustments in our opinions on this and all still be correct. None of us are going to get it perfect. Let every man be a liar and God be right. But for us to come against each other when we all stand on the same side is bad, bad, bad mistake. And there's scriptures that talk about this stuff. And it's very important we pay very close attention to who we're attacking. The, the Bible talks about, and I'm going to read a, actually a bunch of scripture on this, the Bible talks about not getting caught up in these things. Because what happens is now we start causing divisions in between each other. Now is the time with everything that we see going on and with how badly we're being attacked as grace preachers to stick together. Whether we disagree with what somebody else puts out, if it's not a salvation issue, there's no reason to get upset about it. Because the goal is to for us to learn from each other. Because everybody sees the scriptures from a different facet. The scriptures are a jewel. And if you ever look at cut jewels, they have facets all over them. Everybody sees a little differently. Everybody catches a little different something. But that's for our betterment. That helps us because the Spirit speaks to each one of us differently. Each one of our faith is different. Each one of our understanding is different. Some of us have more access to information than others do. So it's really important for us to, to strive for peace, especially in the brotherhood. I don't want to throw any other bunch of names out because it doesn't matter. What matters is we see it happening. And I definitely saw that trap sprung last night and this morning. We don't, we can't at this home stretch, we cannot let the enemy in. We cannot let him win. If somebody's gone off the rails, just don't even pay attention to him. It's better not to even get into discussion. If somebody comes onto your channel that you thought was on your side and suddenly now decides that they're going to be against you, don't hate them for it. Love them. Bless them. Because they may be under attack and it's causing some of this issue. Somebody in particular right now, I think, is in that situation. And uh, I'm praying for everybody because it's just going to keep ramping up and just going to keep getting worse. And this is all the more reason every day you guys need to go into, what is it, Ephesians? And pray the scriptures for the, arm, the armor of God. Put that armor on every single day because it's getting worse really fast. So this whole this beginning part of this video is about misunderstandings. In 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Ephesians 4, 1 through 32, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is very important that right now, especially, that we do this. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Guys, we're all in this boat together. We can see who's not on the side of grace, who's sticking, is not sticking to the truth. It's very clear and evident for that. These people, we don't worry about them. The Lord will take care of it. There's a, there's a time frame coming for that. We're not part of that. We have been set aside. That's why it's so important and why I'm going to keep harping on from now on. Stay where you are. Don't try to change. Don't try to adjust. You know what the truth is. You're in the right spot. Hang there. Don't move. Be immovable. Don't let somebody convince you otherwise because the deception is getting super strong 
and it's catching people and dragging them away. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, not for beating up the brothers and sisters, which it seems like a lot of people are starting to get in the habit of. You have to be careful here. Romans 2, 1 through 29. Therefore, you have no excuse, O man. Every one of you who judges, this is important. This isn't the time for judging. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Guys, what he's saying here is there is no purpose for us to be judging anyone. Now, we can look at what somebody says or hear what they say and go, wow, I, I can use um, Steve Monet as, as an example here. And it's not to shed a negative light on him. It's just that he believes in something that I know isn't true according to scriptures. It's something that we should be doing. It's something that is important for us to do. That's repentance. But repentance does not help salvation. And he thinks it does. So I backed away. Okay, well, this is what you got. So but here's the thing that we always seem to forget. And I'm guilty of it too. Just as much grace and mercy God showed on me for the way I am, how much more is he going to show it for that other person that I'm not looking at and going, oh, look what you're doing, you dirty Christian, and judging them by those same exact things that I was doing. So God's going to show the same mercy and the same grace, if not more, on that person based on what they need. So that's how what the example is for us to share to everyone. Look how Jesus was with all those people adultery, stealing, everything, all these people. And he said, because of your faith this day, you will be with me in paradise. The thief on the cross was condemned because he was so bad. And yet he had faith and he went to heaven. Uh, the, the woman caught in adultery, they were about to kill her. Jesus said, I don't accuse you either. Go sin no more. He didn't come to condemn. So why are we doing it? So if we disagree with something somebody puts out, as long as they're on the same page for grace, Everything else is fine. You don't worry about it. And if it becomes a problem, don't listen to them anymore. But we cannot, because we're going to cause a division if we do this, and it's going to, it's wrath coming upon us. It's a dangerous position to be in. Acts 20, 35, and, all, and look, I'm not excluding myself from this because I do it too. And I try to catch myself, but I still do it. Acts 20, 35 says, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Is that giving and, you know, he's talking about giving and receiving physical things? No, it means the spirit too. It means mercy. It means grace. Just as Jesus shared grace and mercy on us, we are to share grace and mercy on our brothers and sisters and even those in the secular world that have it wrong. It gets infuriating. It gets, it gets frustrating. And once you get in that, because the battle is hot right now, and once you get into that battle mode and you start dealing, having to de deal with people, it gets you fired up. And it's so easy to accidentally lash out at a brother or sister in Christ. And that can become a problem. We have to avoid this. As a watchman, my duty is to point these kinds of things out because just as I'm to set the example, I also have to share with the example that I'm trying to strive to set. We have to forgive everybody. And that all these people that are doing all these things, you know, I don't hold, I, I pray that the Lord doesn't lay any of this, anything that anybody's ever said about me negatively because I'm doing this. I pray, I pray and tell him, please don't lay that on them. They have enough to deal with. They don't need anything they've done to me laid on them also and forgive them. And if they're really bad, hey, well, you know what? The Lord rebuke you for what you just said or what you're doing. You need to get repent and turn, turn back. You got to offer them that same grace and that same way of getting out. Some won't listen, but you never know when that one person might realize, oh, I need to change what I'm doing. I'm wrong. I saw that in the comment section this morning. Somebody did do that. And the person showed them grace after they said, oh, okay, you know what? I did mess up. And 
now there was a bond made between those two because there wasn't hatred involved in that. Oh, here we go. The thief on the cross, Luke 23, 43. And he said to him, truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus had mercy and grace on him. He didn't judge that thief. That thief had been judged and was hanging and was dying just like Jesus was. He didn't judge him. You got faith? Come with me to hang out in heaven. And it's the same thing for us. So how much more should we be doing it to other people? Okay, now, I originally was going to do the video about Proverbs 8 and 9. But I, I felt like that needed to be addressed because I've already seen a couple of people now talk about how they've been getting hit. And it's over misunderstandings of what people are saying. And look, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter how you present it, someone is going to misunderstand Someone's going to misunderstand because they don't have that ability to understand it the way you presented it. Others are going to misunderstand because they don't want to understand. Their goal is to hate everybody they can, possibly can. And they feel empowered here on the internet that nobody can get to them. Not realizing God is writing everything down and keeping track of it. So they're hurting themselves. But don't be one of those that hurts. Turn away from this. And I'm learning this too. You know, seven months ago, I was a totally different person. And I'm pulling way back from this stuff and changing my outlook on things. And I'm letting the Spirit have His way. So the Spirit will lead me to righteousness. And through this, through this change and the works of the Spirit inside me, I'm going to be sanctified and justified through Jesus because of all these things. You just got to let go and, and let the Spirit do His work. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, 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 you said the word work. And now you're a false teacher. Wrong. You, got, you guys don't understand. I've seen this in comments this morning, too. There are works of the Spirit. Everybody's arguing now about whether repentance is a work. Look, if there's works of the Holy Spirit within you, which the Bible says there is, it says works of the Spirit. Repentance is an inward event, isn't it? Isn't it something you do in here? Isn't it a spiritual change, a change of mind, a sorrow against sin? That's, that counts as a spiritual work. So you got to know what works, because there's physical works and spiritual works. The spiritual works are the ones that are important. These do not save you, but these come after salvation. It's all about context and understanding. But but listen, if you're watching this, Diana, any of y'all watching this that have been struggling with people like that, you'll always you're always going to have somebody like that. And if they get too nasty, go and and go, scroll back through my videos. A couple, I think two weeks ago, I did one about how I shadow ban people, and it's real simple. It's real easy. You can do it on YouTube. Uh, you have to use your laptop, but you can go in there and you can. Uh, hide user from channel and then the user can still watch videos and they can still comment but nobody sees their comment not even you it just disappears that way they can still see the truth and that way you're not denying them the truth so in proverbs 8 if you guys want to follow along in proverbs 8 and 9 this is really good stuff and the title of proverbs 8 is the excellence of wisdom hey really actually this works actually matches pretty good does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She is referring to them as entities. She takes her stand on the top of the, of the high hill beside the way where the path meets. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. It's really funny how this was going to be a second video, a different video, but what I talked about first actually applies to this. I did not realize that. I love the way God works. They are all plain to him. Verse 9, they are all plain to him who understands and write to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Be uh, By me, kings reign, and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, 
and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. It's a spiritual treasure. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old. Listen to the story that she's telling. This is the entity of knowledge. The, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting from the beginning before there was even an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master craftsman. This is Jesus Christ. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. This sounds like Jesus. Rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of men. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. This sounds like a description of Jesus Christ. So Proverbs 9 is, called, is titled The Way of Wisdom. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live, and go in the way of understanding. He who corrects, this is important to listen to, he who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. <coughs> Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. See the difference between what we're supposed to be doing? Uh, the way I approach those people now is a lot different than what it was a couple months ago. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is a great quote. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you will bear it alone. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knows nothing. For she sits at the door of her house, on the seat, by the highest places of the city, to call to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And as for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of hell. Really awesome that that was given to me before the other stuff was given to me. But they both tie together to the same thing. A lot of people refuse to pay attention to what they're, what's being said. And they instantly hear something they don't like or, or get the term is triggered, get triggered, and their immediate response isn't to, hold on a second, let me go back and look and make sure that what was going on there. Their immediate response is to attack. Satan has taught everybody to do this. Social media has done this. This is why I'm not on social media. Um, people feel emboldened to do those things. And it has created a very severe problem in our society. The problem is that it's culminating into a situation that cannot be fixed. Because now the individual person, you can't reprogram them. The individual person has to decide to pull out of that and go, uh-uh, I don't want to be a part of this. That's the woman in Proverbs 9 at the end. I don't want to be, I don't want to partake with this woman, this Jezebel. I want to find knowledge and understanding, and that's who I want to hang out with. 
that's who I want to have dinner with. That's who I want to spend the rest of my life with is that one. But a lot of people don't choose that. Some are on a journey still trying to find it. Some never started looking for it. And it's pretty evident in their comments and, and their responses where their heart truly is. And it's unfortunate, but some people you're just going to have to abandon them to the Lord. Lord, I can't deal with this one. This is all you. But forgive them. Bless them. The Bible says to do these things. Don't hold any charge against them. Uh, Jesus, of the people that literally beat him almost to death and killed him, Jesus says to his father, Father, don't lay this charge at their feet. They don't really understand what they're doing. And that's the way we should be with everybody else around us. They get mad. They don't like. I have a lot of people that don't like me. I'm the greatest friend that anybody could ever have. And even the people that don't like me, they're like, I may not like you, but I trust you. You are the same all the time. You have integrity. I've had people that we've almost come to knock down, drag out fights. But they say, I don't like you, but I can trust you because I know you won't do me wrong like these other people who are supposed to be my friends. I've had people tell me that and say that to other people in front of me. I tell them, it doesn't matter if we agree or disagree. If you're in need, if you need something, I'm there, whether I'd like you or not. Um, I've had to go and stop and help people that I've had problems with. And I, I see them on the side of the road. Nobody else, people don't stop nowadays. I pull over. Hey, how's it going? What, what can I do to help you? And they're like, hey, I really appreciate it. I was like, look, no matter what's between us, it doesn't matter. You need help, I'm here to help. And that's the same thing on here. Uh, a lot of people, I've had to shadow ban them because they refused to even try to debate like an adult. Can't deal with you, sorry. But other people I'm st I've been in contact with, I've been talking to. I'm still reaching out to a few of them. And they're breaking off lines of communication. They don't want to receive it. Okay. I don't hate, I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. Because I was there too. I used to be just like that. The Bible says, you know, all y'all were this way, and now you've come out of this. So don't hate those who are still in it. Help them get out. What we should be doing is taking our light and holding it out there and going, hey, over here, guys. Come on. Get out of the darkness and come over here. Stand in the light with me. And a lot of people miss that mark. But this is a growing process as a Christian. It takes time. To come to these things and it's a change but when you allow the spirit to do this when you get, turn it over to jesus and say lord you pour your patience into my heart you pour your love into my heart pour your understanding into my heart so that i can take it and share it with everyone around me that way i will be like you and cause you to get glorified because of it and it's a it's a process it's a what the awesome thing about it is is that because it is a free gift of grace, we don't have to be perfect. We can strive for perfection, but we're never going to get there. But knowing that, and knowing that I'm setting myself as an example for other people, but I know even in my imperfection, even in my brokenness, and, and in the, and dirty, nasty self, the Lord has a day to redeem me from that. So why do I do these things? Because it's free grace. Grace is free, done. There's no discuss, no discussing this at all because it's all over the Bible. Why do we do works? Why do we change who we are? Why do we walk a more holy lifestyle? Is it to be more saved? No. This is where the misunderstanding comes in because a lot of people think, well, once saved, always saved. You guys think you can go sin. No. We don't think we can go sin because we're once saved, always saved. We know that under freedom, we're allowed to make a mistake and then time to correct it. Under law, there is no correcting it. There is one penalty, and that's it. Done deal. There's no coming back. It's death. Under Christ, we have freedom to make a mistake and then come back from it. We have freedom to fall away and come back from it. Jesus is standing there holding our hand going, come on. Come on up here. Let's start over. Let's get you going again. So all of y'all that are fighting with sin, you know, things that you're struggling with, number one, Understand all things in moderation. Number two, if you're struggling with a sin, keep fighting it. Keep struggling. Stay in prayer and let him lead you out of this. But you got to understand how all this stuff works and where this comes from. He saves us so we can go do good works. Salvation is right here all by itself. Everything else is over here. 
And this is all a result of the salvation. And so many people misunderstand it, put them together and go, oh no, you're saying you've got to do good works. No, I'm not. I'm not telling anybody to do anything. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And I'm not doing this to save myself. I'm doing this because I was called to do this. And everyone else has the same calling. Some answer, some don't. But it has nothing to do with my salvation. I know only, my salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. That's it. Nothing I do. Now, a lot of people will say, well, then, so why are you doing it then? Because I love him and I want to be like him. That's why. He scares me because I've seen how mad he can get. And as a, we're about to see it again. And I don't want to be on his bad side. I love him and I want to stand next to him. And I already know I'm saved. But how much more of a willing vessel, how much more of, of a proper righteous tool will I be if I walk the walk? And that's what the Bible says. That's what, it's, that's what it refers to. The apostles didn't just go out and live whatever life they did. They walked the righteous path as a light, as an example for the other people. And not all of us are called, but some of us are called to do that. Watchmen are called to walk that fine line, that path. Because as a watchman, you're a teacher. And teachers fall into the greater judgment and the stricter judgment for what they teach. That's why it's so important. If you're going to claim being a watchman, you have, or even teacher, you have to examine what you're putting out and make sure it's scriptural and biblical. Where it's my opinion, I tell you guys it's my opinion. But I give, I mean, some of y'all count the scriptures that I buy. I give 50, 100 scriptures sometimes, depending on the situation and the, and the topic of the discussion. This is so important, guys, that we guard ourselves because this trap has been sprung and Satan's laughing because he's getting people and he's ripping them away. <clears throat> and I see a couple of very good grace preachers that, are, that may just be starting to get caught in that trap, and I hope they don't because these guys, were all, they're all pillars of this. I learned from these guys, and we've got to stay together. We've got to keep loving each other, hold on to what we have, stay focused, and forgive and bless everybody. You know, the Lord's going to deal with these people. Let them do their thing. He'll deal with it. He'll take care of it. If it's just on here, them talking smack, shadow ban, walk away. Block them, walk away. It, there's nothing that says you must go and deal with these people. But brothers and sisters, we're to be dealing with each other properly. I love you guys. I bless you guys in Jesus' name. I pray y'all have a great day today. And I pray tomorrow's even better. And I pray all the things that I've been getting shown lately are going to culminate in a very incredible event, probably the single greatest event to, to happen on this earth. And that's the rapture of the church. Because I sure have been seeing a lot of stuff lately and getting a lot of confirmations lately. And I, I hope I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Think about this stuff. Read through the scriptures. Study it. Go on to Google. I know for some reason people hate Google, but it's a great tool. Bible verses about whatever you're looking for, put it in there. Go on Bible study tools, open Bible, um, uh, Bible learning. There's a bunch of websites that give you just stacks of scriptures and go read those. Then take a scripture that, that jumps out at you, open your Bible, read the chapter that it's in, read it in context, get a greater understanding of these things. It will put so much peace in your heart and you will be so much more relaxed. Even in fiery trials, you'll still be relaxed. Because you know what's coming next. You know what's on the other side of all this. And it is the most incredible thing that you can never imagine. And we're about to see it. I bless you guys in Jesus' name. I hope you guys are blessed by this. And I hope we can all link up and stay together and stay connected until that time that we're taken up. Because when we get up there, we're going to have eternity to, to sit and look at each other and talk to each other. So it's better we get along here so we won't have no problem getting along up there. See you guys in the next video.